after I finished masters, I it was um, working a fair while to try and uh, finish publishing all the work for my masters. Um, spent four months while I was doing that, while I was uh, to, to make some money while I was working on papers. I spent some time working in the advanced materials characterization facility. Worked there for about half a year with uh, Richard Wera, and that was awesome. Um, got to do some really cool science there, doing industry jobs, doing jobs. Um, uh, samples for academics at Western Sydney training um, other people starting or starting their MRes. Uh, so th- that was actually really cool. Um, then after that, I had a, made a dream come true. Did a bit of a trip around Australia for four months, which was awesome. Just camping. We took my cousin and I took my Ute around uh, the Pilbara and the Kimberleys down the west coast, back along the Nullarbors. Just the best experience. And it really needed that kind of cleared the head, and especially after. A, Two years of of, uh, of master's research and three years of bachelor before that, I was a little bit uh, <laughs> worn out. I was quite lucky. So, both of my parents had attended university. Mum had actually, uh, she'd completed a PhD. It, it was never in my head that that wasn't something I could achieve. Uh, I was quite lucky in that sense, whereas I know a lot of, um, in, in the socioeconomic region that I did high school, um, not everyone was, was uh, as lucky. So, I, 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 I guess... I did always think that yeah, I probably would go to university um, and in high school I just loved science so I, I took all three uh, two or three sciences against the teacher's recommendations so I just wanted to do chemistry, bio and physics and I remember getting out of year 12 the hardest thing was choosing what, what to study and that was, um, that was where I was really lucky um, at West like with the Bachelor of, uh, of, of Advanced Science at Western because our first year was just completely general. Which um, which I loved because it was I could still do like math, physics, chemistry, bio, and spend some time learning university science before I had to choose which avenue to to go down. My project I was looking at <coughs> with these uh, materials where um, they can exist in two magnetic states, um, and the power behind that is then uh, it's kind of like a binary. So whenever you have that kind of binary. You can, uh, I guess, you can do some really cool science. Whether it's switching, um, uh, so yeah, magnetic switching, sensing uh, for things like data storage, um, uh, electronics, a whole lot of things like that. Um, uh, so yeah, mag- magnetic materials that could switch between these two magnetic states, either being on or off, with uh, stimulus like temperature or pressure, light, um, and these types of things. So we were working on the. The, uh, the inorganic chemistry, so making the complexes and, um, and trying to do a bit of a structure function analysis. So, going, okay, um, I've made these compounds. What about these compounds that I've made is responsible for how they're acting to kind of lead, to move, move the chemistry away from the kind of, let's shoot a thousand bullets and measure it and see what happens to, can we kind of direct it to a point where we can have a lot more control in what we're doing. Um, so, I was working with Fung Lee at uh, Parramatta, uh, which is funny because I did my bachelor at Campbelltown. So, uh, actually, it took, um, I actually remember the day I was sitting there, uh, it was when I was still playing cricket and I was sitting there at cricket when we were off batting uh, and I was, uh, I'd, I'd got out early, so I was in a, a, bit de- <laughs> a bit depressed. I was sitting there and it was coming up to my third year research project. I'd already uh, completed a project with Janice um, in uh, anti-cancer, Janice Oldwich, right? which was amazing. I did a project with Bill Price on electrophoretic NMR, which was really cool as well. Um, and I was having a look through the staff directory. That's where I remember I was sitting there at Cricket looking through the staff directory and, um, and I found uh, Fung um, because I was just, I was really, really inspired by the, this, this, uh, the supramolecular, um, which I, uh, it's, you know, we're looking at in supramolecular chemistry, we, we look at, um, Using the interactions between molecules to build, um, to you know, self-assemble really large molecules. And I just thought, how powerful is that? Like you're doing, you, it's like kind of biomimicry, I guess. You're taking the, uh, you're getting inspiration from things like the active sites and proteins and and stuff like that, um, which I yeah, I just I found really cool. So that, that's how I found I found Fang, and then I went and and, um, and just kind of threw myself at him for that project and just said, I'm um, uh, just super keen, can I, uh, <laughs> can I tag along and do this project? And from then on, we just, uh, we clicked, he was, he's been amazing. So, I was always asking myself, like, what's the problem? 
I want to solve. So, at first, I, I thought about anti-cancer and that's when I started. I did that project with Janice in my first year. Um, then, um, with, with, with Fung is when I decided I wanted to move into um, the environmental side and fighting, kind of getting to anything that could fight climate change. Um, so, the idea was solar cells <laughs> um, and with Feng, it was going to be a bit of research into catalysis for things like hydrogen splitting and stuff like that. Um, but uh, in, in that area in supermolecular chemistry, uh, the chemistry for a whole lot of these things is very similar. So, as I was working on this chemistry, and I guess in the very short time of the MRES, we had results that were, I guess, productive for for this other avenue. So, we kind of had to change our focus and head down this area of magnetic study. Feng was always encouraging us to um, to go and, and, and go to other universities and learn and use the equipment there. So, he was often sending me to, um, to, to Sydney, to UNSW, to UQ. Um, I spent a few. I spent a, uh, a month and a half in Japan, um, learning some magnetic studies over there. Um, I was visiting the synchrotron kind of once a month in Melbourne um, to use the to do some X-ray diffraction down there. Um, so I was I was really lucky. It was really uh, a bit of a platform for building collaborations as well as like learning, like just a. Uh, heaps of different instruments um, from, from kind of all over the place. I was really lucky. Almost every class because we'd all often um, inspired by like the when I was hearing other sciences talk because like I said, I, I loved those sciences myself before I had to kind of switch into chemistry. So, it's amazing to kind of see those the, the research that all these people from, from biology were doing but as well um, over into the social sciences and things like that. I'd, um, I found it so interesting. It was so stimulated and it also made you think about your research method and how you attacked questions in science, um, especially uh, especially hearing from other disciplines like social sciences or and, and things like that because it would, there's like a, I, th I think sometimes we we do take a, a bit of a different, um, a different view at how to approach a, a topic and it was really I found instructive and helped me a lot to think about my own project and how I was attacking that by listening to, to people from, from all those kind of different to different research backgrounds. I guess firstly, in where how my position changed in, in that was um, I just fell into, like I was already in love with science, but just the amount of time, in, going from a bachelor where you're told do this to do that, to then being told here, go and <laughs> this is like, this is kind of, you know, this is what we, we want you to eventually try and achieve this, but go and um, and Feng was great like that. He'd say like he'd give you a lot of freedom, just be like go and um, and do a lot of reading, like. But then um, you know you're kind of uh, the ball's in your court, and that was really cool. So um, to suddenly have all that freedom, I just fell in love with science so much more because it was um, you know I could I could take my lab work you know, where I wanted it to go, I could do the reading I wanted to do, go from in bachelor where you can sometimes have that, that structure of, of um, uh, when you get into a lab and you've, you know, you have to follow this, this, this to get there. Um, instead, it was, you know, this is, this is here, this end goal, find the best way to get there, um, which, I, which I really enjoy. I felt that a better way to learn too. Um, and as well, what I found really, really amazing. Um, some some people sometimes find it a little bit frustrating is going to ask these questions and then realizing that no one, no, <laughs> that one, no, one, no one, like yeah, or at least maybe at the university, no one has the answer. So we've got to go somewhere else to, to find that out. Or or no, no one knows that answer. You know that was that was so um, that was really exciting. So it's going from bachelor where most of the time the answers. You, you know, you were you were, the stuff you were learning had an answer um, to you know going into this situation where there might not be like or definitely not because you know that's why you're doing the research, right? <laughs> um, well, yeah, after a bit of a hiatus, it's been almost two years now. I've been I'm, I've still been just trying to publish work from the masters. We got really lucky where we um we just worked really hard and there was a lot of content that we had. So I've been still writing, um, missing the lab, but still writing and. Uh, I start my PhD in um, mid-January over in England 
um, at Oxford University. I'm working on the catalysts for converting carbon dioxide into, into polymers. Uh, and the idea is that if we can try and valorize carbon dioxide as a raw material, then hopefully it'll bring down the cost of trying to trap trap carbon dioxide um, and hopefully, you know, stimulate the, the economy of trying to pull it out of the atmosphere. Because unfortunately, we live in this, um, as someone who's passionate about the environment, it's quite frustrating that we kind of live in this, um, we, we have a situation where the technology is kind of there for carbon dioxide, you know, for, for trying to capture carbon dioxide, but it's expensive and no one's going to foot, foot the bill. So, I, I was doing a lot of, um, a lot of, like, like, again, I was asking myself all the way through kind of uh, masters, well, like, what's the problem I want to solve? And I, I landed on the fact that I think one of the biggest problems we're facing, obviously, is climate change and global warming. So, wanting to try and um, to try and get into something where you're mitigating that, like the utilization of carbon dioxide. And so, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of a lot of research and reading a lot of papers and trying to find um, the research that, like, um, you know has I guess a fighting from my opinion a fighting chance at trying to at trying to achieve these goals. I um got in contact with the supervisor at Oxford, Charlotte, and she's just been brilliant from the start. Um it was a huge interview process, like uh it was really daunting. I had um a big like uh my first one was a big um once I got kind of shortlisted for a project it was a big uh interview with a panel there and it was um it was quite daunting, like old Oxford academics and uh it was really quite a, um, I guess it was the first time I'd had an interview where it was, they were trying to trip you up, I guess. It was a, it was a technical interview. Um, so, that was, that was quite intimidating. Um, and then when I finally got an interview with, uh, with Charlotte, the supervisor there, um, I thought it was going to just be like a, actually quite funny, I thought it was just going to be like an informal type thing. So, I... Um, uh, <laughs> Because it was via Zoom, uh, only at the last minute, I was um, I was just in, you know, just a t-shirt, and uh, Mum goes, "Oh, wait, aren't you going to like put a suit on or something?" And I'm like, "I, I think it's just a formal." She's she's just sent me an email saying, "Oh, put a few slides together and we'll just discuss your research." That's all. And so I, was, I just thought it's going to be quite informal. Mum says, "Throw something on." So I threw on. It was middle summer, so I just put on like a suit top and a tie, but had my swimmers <laughs> swimmers on underneath. Um, and uh, probably lucky I didn't think about it too much because I got in there and it was just a, a real technical interview. Like uh, after I had discussed my research, then it was just chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was like a, a swap to, oh, okay, cool. Um, sounds great. You can start. <laughs> like uh, we still got to apply for, because after that, after I actually got the okay from, from the supervisor, then I had to still apply for the position as well, and get a um, and uh, like get a a, a DPhil a PhD spot there. Yeah, not just in terms of resume, um, but more so even just writing uh, my proposals, writing my the the background that they gave us because we had to we had to basically write our proposals as if we were in their res, as if we were going to or well, yeah, like we were obviously doing the research, but as if we were going to do our PhD. So I'd already kind of done those. These things I'd already written um, proposals, to, you know, uh, to do research, um, which <laughs> really put me in good stead for this application because that's exactly what I had to do. In in the end, I'm actually so lucky that that I did go into that two year system, not just for what the first year did for me in terms of my my ability to write and research, um, and and to think, to th really think critically and how to approach a question. Um, that was really what I took out of that first year. It was, but actually having those two years rather than say like really the nine months of an honours project um, was I had the time to, to actually try and get some papers out of, you know, some results, some proper results out of, um, out of, the pro out, out of my project, which I, without that I would, wouldn't have got a spot um, at Oxford. That's, uh, I, was, I was very lucky that. Um, with that time and with the supervisor that pushing me as hard as I did, I was able to get a few few results out, and that's that's in debt, like without a doubt, uh, what got me over the line for something like that project. We've got a lovely research community there at, at, at Western, so I guess I was lucky in, in a sense that 
um, you know, I had a supervisor who was able just trusting me to 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 do my thing and to and then you know whenever I needed his help, I could just walk into his office. I could just I could send him a paper at you know Sunday afternoon, and I'd have you know Monday morning I'd have his comments back, um, or we'd just spend you know. He'd stay back with me one night to just back and forth to finish a paper off and send it away or something like that, um, which I know I probably won't ever get again. <laughs> you know? What I do need to improve definitely was kind of my uh, my teammates might say this is my cleanliness <laughs> in the lab, um, uh, but as well organization. Like uh, that's um, towards the end of my masters, I realized how important it was to be to be organized to have uh, to. I was good at planning my research, but kind of. Um, you know, ensuring that uh, planning, you know, down the line and things like that, uh, definitely uh, that's a big lesson I learned was to be well prepared. Obviously, things are going to change, but um, to, to kind of plan ahead. Um, <laughs> um, in terms of skills, the the skills that I guess really were really important for, for this kind of thing <sighs> was persistence like uh, people and persistence and then persistence with your idea but then also the ability um, and the attitude to know that things aren't going to go to plan and to not let that get you down you know like to actually take to see a result that doesn't go your way which I think like not to think of it as you want it to go a certain way, but not the way you expect it and not go, oh, damn it, that's my, that's, you know, I've lost all this time doing that. Instead, it's like, well, this has happened and I've got to chase, like I've got to really work out what's happened in this result. You know what I mean? It's like, because a, a, in a, in a pro project that short, things are going to go, things are going to, you're going to run into, especially in synthetic science, you're going to run into hurdles. And you've really got to have the persistence and the drive, but as well as the um, to get through that, but as well as the ability to kind of stand back and look at the bigger picture, and and not let that get to you, and know that you know you've you've got to just do the science. Again, I think this was a a great thing about the MRS project too is it gave you the time, like like we said before, this time like a two years rather than a nine month uh, honors. It gave you the time to write properly. To actually be able to go, okay, you know, I'm six months out now. I can I can be doing this writing, or you know, um, which allowed me to actually write a thesis, um, by how I felt I wanted to do it and properly, and include everything I wanted to, rather than hurriedly in the last month trying to put together <laughs> something. So um, um, I was, uh, it's, it was a it was a it was a big process. I was very tired after after basically like six months almost of, of writing. But um, how I how I structured mine, I was lucky enough to be able to have um, the majority of the chapters be uh, papers in themselves, or um, at least like a draft of one, um, a, you know, written to be one um, once I'd finished, and then kind of a culmination uh, chapter at the end. Um, which I'm still actually just trying to publish at the moment. <laughs> it's taken a while. But um, I was, again, um, uh, really, really, really fortunate because I got the time to, to really make the, the thesis where I wanted from it. Um, uh, I had uh, really nice, really nice reviews from both my reviewers and they, uh, they both actually recommended it to be, uh, to be marked as a, as a PhD. They wanted me to, they wanted to send it back and for me to spend a bit of time doing a few more results to get it ready uh, for a PhD, um, which is a, another funny story in itself. I was uh, over in, mum and I afterwards ducked over to Europe um, and we're sitting there on the way back. I uh, can't remember which airport we were at, but we were, all, we were ready to come back over and I got an email from Feng being like, check your emails. Because <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was really worried um, about like the marking of it, especially if it was going to... Um, there's a lot of crystallography in it, and that's a skill I had to pick up in masters. And I was a bit worried that maybe it was going to go to a crystallographer. <laughs> so, um, uh, as I was like at the airport, I hardly checked the results, and they were saying, "Oh, you know, we want you to, we 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 recommend um, spend a few months, and we want to mark this as a as a PhD." Um, 
so then it was kind of a discussion for, for <laughs> when I got back for a few weeks about what to what to do there. But in the end, in the end decided um, just to keep it as a keep it as masters and and move on with PhD.